Today, our champion Steve Vadney of Claremont, New Hampshire, faces the challenge of Bob Kelly of Marlboro, Massachusetts on Candlepin Bowling. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Candlepin Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and as always, we're glad that you could join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts for three strings of Candlepin Bowling. Total pinfall determines our winner. And as you also know, the uh, bowlers will take home a permanent souvenir. These are supplied by Week's Trophy of Lynn and guaranteed prize money. $1,200 is guaranteed. $700 of that goes to the winner. $350 goes to the runner-up. And we have $50 available to the winner of each string. And obviously, should they tie a string, we would split that at $25 apiece. Many other opportunities for our bowlers to make some money. Most of you are familiar with them. They certainly are. I'll remind you as the program goes along. But right now, let's talk to today's bowlers, shall we? Bob Kelly, the, I know we did this last year, but everybody starts to tease you and me because this is uh, five decades for both of us, and I think Steve Badney already said that maybe we were around when bowling was invented, huh? <laughs> Could be. <laughs> <laughs> but it has been quite a while. Uh, you came on first in 1959, and obviously I was on in 1958. Now, I'm a little bit ahead of you here. You have nine grandchildren. I have 11. How about that, huh? Wow, we can see who the busiest was. <laughs> <laughs> My kids were. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Hey, listen, it's great to have you here, and uh, you, I see that you're still, you son of a gun, 119 average, boy, that's great. And, uh, Stephen, I noticed that you, uh, I'm looking at your, you know, I, I, I don't know how I really overlooked this and didn't talk to you about it last week, but your record is really super. You've only lost once on this program in the six times you've been on, huh? Well, actually twice. Uh, I lost to Chowie Jutras and then the next year to Fred Spintek, I think. Oh, is that right? Well, I only have this, the, we'll have to get after Don Riley yeah. because uh, he only put down the Charlie Jutras one, and I was just thinking about the fact that Jutras is in the same category as we are, right? right? right. Some, some of these old-timers. Hey, listen, you're both uh, fine fine bowlers and uh, I'm looking forward to a good one. Both good luck. Thank you. We'll get underway right after this. Candlepin Bowling is sponsored in part by Cotter True Value, the You Can Do It hardware store. Well, I indicated his league average is 119. Leaving the one, three, four, seven, eight, and ten with one piece of wood just to the right of the three pin. He used it, but unfortunately did not get the head pin. Bob's high single, 196. It's a nine box. His high triple is 472. The 32nd appearance for Bob Kelly, and as our statistician and coordinator Don Riley has noted, Bob is almost a strike. He left the kingpin. He is, uh, to date, He's the first, anyway, and to date the only bowler to appear in all five decades that we've been on the air in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. And he has a spare in the second. That brings up Steve Vadney. 125 average. High single, 197. And his high triple, 488. How about that? He has the one, two, six, and ten. The wood, I, well, maybe one piece of wood will help. It's the one behind. Whatever it went, anyway. So that's the way to start. Steve's first appearance on our program was back in 1984. Eight is the fill, and he's looking at the five and eight for two in a row. Too bad. Missed the five, got the eight. Right. 
the chance. Bob Kelly's first appearance on our show was the 7th of November, 1959, and he was an unsuccessful challenger that time to Tony Baldinelli. Six is the fill, and he's looking now at the two, four, seven, and 10, with Wood right behind the two and four. You know what he'll be trying to do, to move that wood over to get the 10 while taking out the three pins on the left. Nope. Came too far, being the left-hander, he came too far to the right and missed all three pins on the left. It's an eight. in Waltham and Recreation Center being the people that Bob is representing today. Great try. He had seven and ten. He had a piece of wood. He got the seven, kicked the wood over, but it just didn't have enough force when it came over. And uh, it did not pick up the ten. Okay, it is a 10. Now Steve Badney. Steve's married, father of two, and he works for Sturm Ruger Company Incorporated. He's got a split of the four, seven on the left and the six, 10 on the right, and each has a piece of wood right across. That's the left side. Ten. Six and seven, no wood. One and seven still there. It's a nine. All right, first check on the scoreboard. As you know, we always do after four boxes in the first string and four in uh, the second. And after those four here in the first string, it is our defending champion, Steve Vadney, 47, challenger, Bob Kelly, 43. In the last two boxes, each of our bowlers got an 18. Kelly, it was an 8 and a 10. Vadney, a 10 and an 8. Right now, it's 65 Vadney, 61 Kelly, as we move on to the seventh box with Bob Kelly. Ralph, uh, strike. Ralph Stewart is not with us today. He's on uh, vacation. Don Riley is sitting in for him, and uh, to, to make you all feel comfortable, he's wearing a sweater and Argyle socks. After all, that's Ralph's uniform. Don is always our coordinator, and today, while he's at the uh, lob line, our uh, statistician and alternate referee is Tim Michelle. Eight will be the fill on his strike. And he's left the six and seven with no wood. It's a nine. Right. Our crew today, Skip Peabody, Jeff Sullivan, 
Judy Guile, and at great expense, we have brought from the studio, Ted Phillips. Steve Adney punches out half Worcester on the right side. And the man in charge of all this, and to keep it from becoming a mess, is our producer and director, Phil Rubin. An eight. Is it going to be a strike? No. Kingpin, five at... Uh, Rocked back and forth, but now it's surrounded by wood, which probably kept it up for a spare. Yes. Now Bob Kelly coming up for the final two. You know, looking at uh, Bob Kelly's record, there are names out of the past here whom we have not seen for 25 years. And uh, here's Bob still here. If I get a chance, I'm going to run down some of these names and see how many of you who have been watching for years may remember, and others will say, huh? <laughs> Andy Lucini, Slim Morrissey, Henry Gauguin. I'm sure some of you will remember Roland Blondin. Then there was uh, Arthur Duff, George Cameron, and another man who had a long, long streak, Walter Finn. Nice shot. Here are a couple of more. Joe Bucko. Eno McLean. Bob looking now at uh, one, two, seven, and eight. Al Hargrove, Paul Siska, Jr. Nope, he has left the two and seven. And got it for a 10. Jim Sanford and uh, let's see. Uh, good old Joe Donovan, too. Here's another. Mike Sargent, what a, what a string he had at one time. What a string of victories. Another good Candleman bowler, Norman Hall, Mike Miro. Jim Johnson, Tom Senemy. Nice shot. Some names out of the past. All of whom competed against Bob Kelly, and he's still here. Bonus ball. Oh, what a bonus ball. A strike. Strike in the 10th box for Steve Adney. Three marks in a row, Steve Badney. And he... Seven on the first ball. Yes! What a finish! So basically, he picked up $150 in bonus money in those uh, last three boxes, including the fact that, of course, he won the string, picking up the, the uh, last of the 50s. Uh, and... Uh, he has won the first string by a score of 130 to 108. It's the middle string. That means our defending champion leads it off. Here's Steve Adney. Five, seven, nine. Piece of wood right in front of the five. Yes! All right, that's five marks in a row. But, of course, the bonus money is limited to 
a single string. And he's starting all over again in this middle string. Seven is the pinfall, and he's looking at the one, two, and eight. Got the one and eight, but did not get the two pin. That's a ten. Before I forget it, the final tournament this year, or this season, I should say, not this year, for the World Cattlepin Bowling Congress, the Cattlepin Pro Bowlers Tour, is going to be held March 14th and 15th at the Londonderry Bowling Center in Londonderry, New Hampshire. Boy, that's an unusual leave. I don't know. I can't remember when I've seen the eight and nine as the only two pins standing. There are three pieces of wood in front, Bob looking it over. Touched a piece of wood in front, the ball went one way, the piece of wood went the other, and those two pins are still standing. It's an eye. By the way, the, the last stop on the Pro Tour was at the Bolorama in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and the five top ladies were Janet Pock, Denise Kelly, Lynn Perrin, Shelley Pedzewski, Pedzewick, <laughs> come on, Don, Valerie Joy. Uh, and uh, for the men, it was uh, Bob Kelly almost had a strike. He has left the five pin. Tom Olster, Fred Granala, Bob D. LaFontaine, Craig Holbrook, and Danny Murphy. Top score, Tom Olster's 1378. Top for the ladies, Janet Fox, 1250. And yes, Janet Pock is still one of the top five for our championship show. He's in fifth place. We start. She had a 408. Steve Badney now looking at one, two, four, eight, and six and ten. No wood. One and ten still standing. Peter Surratt is still in lead for our championship show the last Saturday evening in August. 453. Jack Quinn is second, 437. What a great battle they had. Whoa. Tom Surratt, speaking of a big battle, 422. Gary Casey, 418. And as I said, Janet Pock, 408. Bad and he winds up with a seven. Now Bob Kelly, remember, is working on a spare as he comes up. It will be five. Four horsemen left side and the nine pin, but he does have some wood that... Yes! Yes, he made it. Nice shot. So two in a row now for Bob Kelly. Nine pin drop. And he has the four pin to pick up for three marks in a row and $50 in bonus money. It's 
Speaking of bonuses, our Hilo jackpot is up to $1,475. Our home viewer jackpot is at $100. But that Hilo, $1,475. All right, single pin to pick up for $50 in bonus money. And yes, he has it. Okay, with the bonus ball still to be thrown by Bob Kelly, after four boxes of the middle string, he is leading 53-43. Steve Badney, our defending champion. Fifth box, middle string. One, two, four, and eight at the left side, six and ten at the right, one piece of wood way off to the left. Oh, yes, what a nice shot. Very, very nice conversion of a spare there. Mm -hmm. Okay, make it worth it now. Almost a strike. Everything down except the head pin. Nine pin drop. He has it. So he has two marks in a row. And Bob Kelly has three in a row. Now each consecutive mark is worth $50 apiece since he has established the bonus of $50. All right, he got uh, pins dropping, and when the, when the five and six drop, he's left with just the 10 pin. Now he has $50 in bonus money. Is he going to get another? Oh! Oh, he just missed it as it went to the gutter side. Did it again. Six and ten. He had to get the two. Instead, he got just the four. He had to get the two to move over to pick up the six and ten. Obviously, I am not saying that for those of you who can see, because it's quite obvious to you, but I do it for those persons who are blind, or legally blind, who listen to our program, since they can't see it. All right, Steve Badney, our defending champion on the line now. And he has a strike. Ball nets him seven but leaves him a split. He has the six and ten on the right and the seven alone over on the left with no wood. Now he got the two pins on the right and got a little sidewall bounce. It went a little bit towards the seven, but not far enough before going into the pit. Ten. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, Jesse Wodasek of Springfield, uh, or Adams, Massachusetts, I should say, that our 85th birthday party, that 60 people showed up, and I'm glad to hear that our show was part of the highlight of our week. Bob Kelly is now looking at the 2, 4, 7, 6, 10. The only wood is in front of the 6, 10. He can get that two pin to go over. Nope. He hit the pocket, but 
took out. Just two. It's an eight. Our defending champion, as you see, Steve Adney, leading by 36. He has a 10 box. Thin hit to the right side for Bob Kelly. No wood to help. Is he going to get them all? Yes! That was a fine, fine spear. All right. Now Steve Adney. For a moment, we thought uh, maybe he had a strike, but he has left the five and the nine. There's a piece of wood off to the left of it and another to the right, which is uh, just about parallel to the pit and where the three would be. He used it and he made the spare. drop only the six pins that's the only one standing so as as he did uh, in the first string when he finished with that actually four consecutive marks he now has two in a row here and uh, he had except for that ten in the eighth he would have had six in a row so just a pair no excuse me it's it's a it's a spread eagle he got four as a drop he left three on each side standing now bob kelly and remember he's working on a spare Eight pin drop. The two pins that are standing are the six and ten. There are three pieces of wood lying side by side just to the left of the six pin. And with all of that, the ten pin did not go. Six did. I guess maybe he was just a little too careful with it. He rolled it down rather gently. Ten. Thirty-seven pin lead for our defending champion Steve Vadney, going into the final box of the middle string. And Bob Kelly has a diamond left. He has wood in between, which uh, should help. He's looking at two, four, five, and eight. With wood in back of the two and four. No, the five is still there. For a 125, yes. However, Steve Badney has a 144, and so he wins another $50, winning the middle string 144 to 125, and it's after two, Badney 274, Kelly 233. Our challenger, Bob Kelly, leading off lane two here at the fairway. This is the third string. He's trailing by 41 pins, and he did what he doesn't want to do, and that is he punched out the half Worcester on the right side, the three and nine. 
Almost came back and made it. Everything down except the five pin. Missed it. It's a nine. As you can tell from the reaction, those of you who can't see, there is a pin rocking back and forth. It's the two pin, and it appeared as if it might fall into the other remaining pin, the four pin, but it did not. So that's what Bob is looking at right now as he goes for the two four and got just the two. Nine and a ten. Now our defending champion Steve Badney with a big lead going into the third string. He has a strike. Next week's challenger will also be a veteran candlepin bowler who appeared on our program a long time ago. Jim Power. First ball gets him six, but uh, now make that seven. Now he basically has no object pin standing, so he will have to use, there are four pieces of wood. He's got the seven and the nine and 10 and one, two, three, four pieces of wood. So this is gonna be probably one of those, it was, that was one of those spray and pray. And it worked. So Steve begins the third string with a pair of marks. Now his challenger, Bob Kelly. seven with wood behind it. Six pin alone over on the right. Nope. Got the four and seven. Two and six still there. It's a nine. Nice hit, but he left two pins standing. The four and the seven. Too bad. Piece of wood deflected the ball, and he got only one. The seven pin. Now for a, a ten. Steve Adney hoping to put together some more bonus money. He has two marks in a row. He had four in a row in the first string. He had three in a row, and then an open with a 10 box and then two more in the middle string. All right, it's uh, eight as a fill. One and six. Can he make it? One and six, no! So no bonus money. That was worth $50 had it been made. And possibly more, obviously, because after getting three in a row, then each subsequent consecutive mark on the same string is worth $50 a piece. 
and an extra $100 if a bowler has a 400 series. Three strikes in a row is worth $1,000. Then each successive consecutive, however you want to say it, basically if he gets four in a row, he gets 2,000. <laughs> Five in a row, 3,000, <laughs> which has never happened. So, Steve uh, picks up the spear, but obviously would have had four in a row and uh, may not had the difficulty in the third box. Now, Bob Kelly has a spare leave. It's one of those triangles, which, as we know, can be tricky. This one is the three, five, and six. One piece of wood just to the left of the five pin. Will it go? Yes. All right, spare in the fifth for Bob Kelly. Here's the bonus. Is it gonna go? The five pin is rocking back and forth and that's the one he wanted to have go. Because now he has side-by-side -side pins in the four and five, but he also has the seven. So this is obviously the shot that he wants to make is to hit the left side of the four and try to send it on a parallel plane over towards the five while the ball continues through and gets the seven. Let's see if he can do it. Well, he went for the wood instead. He decided to go for the piece of wood that was to the right of the five. It didn't work. He got the parallel pins, but he didn't get the seven. Our defending champion, Steve Badney, <coughs> Claremont, New Hampshire, has a fine third string going. Already at 57, plus what he gets on this next ball in the fourth box. Not what he wanted. Spread eagle, giving him just four. Now he has uh, the corners full. He knocked down obviously two four on the left and three six on the right but the seven and ten are still up not anymore it's a ten Once again, he has one, two, three, four pieces of uh, wood lying on the deck, but standing up behind them, seven, nine, ten. And he used the wood in order to make it. Eighty-one right now through six with the bonus balls still to be rolled. Kelly. Four horsemen, right side, and the eight pin. He has no wood to help. Tough shot. Four and six. Wood in back of the uh, four pin. Another piece just to the left of the six pin.
Got the two four, but the six is still there. Badney working on a spare gets eight. The two pins standing are side by side, seven and eight. Now there's two pieces of wood. There are two pieces of wood. Remember, it's seven and eight. Seven went. The ball flew, but right by the eight pin. Nine. 98 through 7, and as you can see, 64 pins ahead. Okay, an 8-pin drop. And uh, a 126 would give him another $100 in bonus money for going over 400. Will he do it? We don't know. Can he pick up these two? Yes, he does for a spare. So that keeps him alive. Right now, he's at uh, 108 with a bonus ball to go and two boxes, so he has an excellent chance of getting a 400. Uh, Kelly's final two boxes. Bob has been, actually, he's been pinning very well in this string. He's knocked down every single pin except in two boxes, and in those he had nine. But unfortunately for him, it's a whole string of tens and only one spare. Excellent pinning, but unfortunately not loading up with marks. Now looking at one, five, seven, and eight, and the seven's still there. Tim Michelle has just gone down to uh, pick up a piece of wood. People are getting on Don Riley for not go having gone down there to get that, but in all fairness, Don has a bad back. So he, he, cannot, uh, he cannot bend over uh, because of the pain in his back. So Tim Michelle is acting as alternate referee and went down to get that. Bob Kelly looks at five pins over on the right-hand side. Basically, it's a diamond on the right plus the 10 pin. Three, five, six, nine, and 10. Can he make it? Oh, no, five and 10 still there. Now, Steve Adney, let's see if he gets his 126 or better for uh, an, an extra $100 for going over 400. Well, that was a thin hit. Just four. And he's looking now at one, two, four, eight, six, and ten. There are still four pins standing. Eight, that puts him at 120, so uh, I guess we could say that he will get it. Obviously, he's already picked up another $50 in bonus money for winning the third string, which he's won already. Now, will he get his 400? I would think so. Yep, there it is. That gives him 127. 401. The three pins standing are the Three, six, ten. And yes, he got a spare. 130. Remember now, Janet Park has a 408. And 
He did it. He just moved past uh, Janet Park into fifth place. So, Steve Badney is now in fifth place for our True Value Championship. Final score, Badney 411 and Kelly 337. $100 at our home viewer jackpot, and the total today is 748. Let's see whether we have a winner. When I draw the card, that person is going to win a handsome prize from the Parker Pen Company, but will he or she win the $100? That we will find out right now. Uh, let's see. Uh, anywhere within 10 of 748, that would mean 738 would be a winner, wouldn't it? Okay, Milton, Massachusetts is where this one came from. Pat Hastings, and her guess is 731. Nope. So we add another $50 in bonus money. Steve, you want to try again? Hilo Jackpot's worth $1,475. What's $1,475? Okay, Bob. Bob Kelly has a chance for it. Oh, you scared it. Okay. <laughs> okay, Bob. Uh, what can I say? <laughs> you just keep making it, though, you son of a gun. You got three fifty plus fifty dollars in bonus money, and uh, uh, as they say in the, what, what's that song? Well, maybe next year, right? <laughs> Something like that. Uh, okay. And Steve, uh, you've got over four hundred. You are now in uh, fifth place for our championship show. You knocked out Janet Pock. No, one New Hampshire right uh, no, knocking out another. Uh, what, did you, what did we get today? $700 for you plus uh, $400 in bonus money. Very nice going. All right. Jim Powers will be your challenger next week. Bye-bye, everybody. We're a little late. See you later. <laughs>